<laughs> uh, this is Cal Cat the Cal Catster, and this is a review of the season finale of Star Trek Picard Season 3, The Last Generation, which is literally Silly Trek, The Borg War. It's Starship Locations, The Borg War. Yeah. Um, cool that they did that. Um, yeah. Because, because, uh, well, literally decades ago in Season 2, Two, I believe, of the uh, series, The Next Generation. Um, when we were fans playing the role-playing game, one of the episodes was called The Last Generation. One of them was also called The Lost Generation. So, to be fair, anyway, I'm Q as well. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, so I have that two-pronged thing going on. We have Seven of Nine and uh, uses 7 of 9 and the crew use a clever means to beam the Borgified youngsters into the, into the, uh, transporter room, um, while they, uh, just a skeleton crew aboard, I guess that's possible, uh, while they use the cloaking device to go around and knock out all the, to, or knock out some of the, uh, attack ship, uh, communications thing to, to the collective, Meanwhile, old Jack has been taken into a cube, which is stuck into Jupiter, a bit like uh, one of Mark's card short stories that he never finished, the Jupiter experiment. So, yes, uh, Mark's cards, or John, or whatever, they actually blow up part of Jupiter in this. So, there you go. <laughs> Spoiler! What? <laughs> um, that's right out of that. So, there, there, this is clearly... Um, as though, for some reason, we were through osmosis or something in the writing room during during season three here. Um, yeah, the, now the Enterprise F in it. Um, in the Silly Trek version, it's under Wesley, but here it's under Admiral Shelby, so it's different. Um, um, so, um, but I'm, I'm assuming she died, because they don't show her again, but they just should have said she was a changeling. But they kind of hinted at that later on. Uh, so we have this attack going on. And we have Picard and, crew and the Enterprise D and crew going to the uh, cube. And then they fly into the cube, a bit like in, um, yeah, a bit like in some of the Voyager episodes where they did stuff like that. Um, uh, they, they go into the cube, they go up to the cube first, and then they beam inside the, the cube. Yeah, Picard and Worf and Riker go inside the cube, and there's like a... They gotta stop Jack and disconnect him from the collective. A bit like a Best of Both Worlds, part two. Um, and part one and two, it's a lot of Best of Both Worlds in there. A lot of, oh, we're gonna fire the torpedoes. Oh no, we're going to kill them or whatever. And a lot of that. Um, so they go in there, and, and yeah, the, 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 yeah um, they don't, of course. Uh, but but yes, the, uh, the they have... They beam inside the Borg cube, they discover that this is the Borg from Voyager, apparently. The other Alice Creed Queen, who is the one that was at the end of Voyager in Endgame in 2378. And, and her particular ship is all screwed up, and apparently she's been eating the other Borg. So she's kind of a mess. She also vaguely looks like the, uh, the villain from the... Well, melted looking. Looks like the villain person from the other, other, yeah, the Amanda Plummer's character, Vatic, yeah. So the, the pitch-bent male voice that was talking to her was the queen, not a male, it was the queen. It was the queen, it should have been a drag queen. Everybody thought the Paw Wraiths for some reason. No, it was never the Paw Wraiths. Of course, I also thought it was the Bluegills, and it wasn't the Bluegills. Well, this is because the Bluegills, well, they're in Silly Track, or Starship Locations. Also, the other reason is that, uh, that the Borg were meant to replace the, uh, the Bluegill. The Borg were meant to replace them as the Big Bad instead of having it be them. So that's why they did that. But they later used a version of the Bluegills as the Trill, the Trill Symbionts. So they, that's a good guy version. So, and then Renegade Bluegills and good guy Bluegills. The Renegade ones are on, uh... <laughs> In the, on the Tribble planet in the Tribble story. And it's supposed to be 2401 in the episode, and our dating our dating from Starship locations was one year off, 
So, so yeah. <laughs> Uh, so we said 2402, but uh, yeah, um, but yeah, the, uh, which has no relevance to Star Trek, but it's interesting. There's this weird parallel that's going on because yeah, they should they should hire us because obviously next generation Wesley Crusher's age. Yeah, well now we're not next generation. We're the generation after that. So before that, so <laughs> the last generation. Um, but yeah, um, oops. <laughs> Literally, the, the next generation. You know, Ed Spleers um, is a, a fine job playing an insane, half borgified guy, but it was never the Pares. Um, spoilers. Um, yeah, so they go into the cube and they. Picard hooks himself up to the. pulls out some of the it's the things and plugs in the thing. And, Locutus shows up briefly, and Locutus goes inside the Matrix in the Borg Cube. Which they, they didn't address it was a Matrix, but I, yeah, the Unimatrix. So there you go. They mentioned the Unimatrix. Um, they're, they're, so, so yeah. They say, oh, they're ripping off the Matrix movies. Ah, oh, but no, no, that predates the Matrix movies. The first Matrix movie came out in 1999. And the Borg, Best of Both Worlds, was, was 1990. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, nine years earlier. Also, The Matrix is ripping off William Gibson uh, and a number of other things. I mean, The Romancer. Another movie that was doing William Gibson was uh, Johnny Mnemonic, which also did something similar. Yeah, so, <laughs> earlier. Uh, but yes, um, and it's the same guy. It's Neo. It's the same guy. So, Johnny Mnemonic leads to The Matrix. Anyway, back to the Star Trek. Um, the, yeah, he manages to convince to escape. Uh, some of the Borg drones do wake up to try to attack Worf and Riker. There's a fight on the ship. Uh, they only have one choice but to destroy the transmitter, so it's like a classic World War II, sneak into the bad guy bunker, blow up the, you know, blow up the evil fortress thing, blow up the core thing, and then escape. Uh, where well, they gotta rescue them with the transporter, because it's always about rescuing them with the transporter. They did that in three movies. So why not do it again? Uh, Data flies the ship into where the thing is, and they discover if they blow it up, the other crew will be will be totally killed by the by the blast. And they have a minute to get out. And, well, they've had less odds than that before. Um, so so sure. Um, it's a little silly, but that's okay. Um, it's Star Trek. This sometimes it's a little silly. Uh, you, you have you have. Uh, and if it's starship locations, if it's Chimera, it's actually very subdued for, for a starship locations episode. Um, yeah, yeah, all season has been like that. Uh, very subdued and dark. It's one of the like, darker, uh, in the mirror darkly, Borg episodes. Yeah, so. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. Um... So Data flew the ship to the thingy, and then, uh, and then after they're escaping from having blown up the thing, Troy takes the helm and doesn't blow up the ship. Earlier on, we have also we have Doctor Crusher firing the torpedoes at the Borg cube to get them inside, and then Data flying the ship into the impossible thing because it's Data, and and Troy flying the ship to where Riker is because she senses his powers. Yeah, her 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 mental powers are inconsistent in this, um, because she's old. I don't know. <laughs> Some people were also commenting on on Trek Yards yesterday when they were doing a doing like different going on about what guessing that's going to be in this one. They got most of it wrong, <laughs> but okay. Um, but some of them wondered why why Gates McFadden um, has different hair. In different episodes and stuff, and I know about that one. But not only the 2017 convention where they said it once there too, but also from uh, from earlier conventions in the 90s where they said uh, they 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 made the revelation at one point in an episode of the convention, and they've said it many times before. You can look it up. Uh, Gates McFadden wears wigs on the show, The Next Generation, and that's why her hair keeps changing style and everything. She's wearing wigs. You know, she's not a natural redhead. She's brunette. She's not a natural redhead. Oh, <laughs> she's a good wig. Also, De uh, Marina Sirtis also wears wigs. 
and, and she wore the wig that she wore from that she nicked. She said she nicked it from from uh, generations to be in a uh, from the from she nicked it from um, yeah the last movie they did from Nemesis to be in Picard season one. So. She got a different one for this one. A different wig, yeah. Uh, so they wear wigs. Uh, at the convention in 2017, one of the, the San Jose Comic Con, they used to have a San Jose Comic Con. Now it's called Adam Savage's Silicon. But it was called, back then it was called Comic Con, San Jose. And um, they, uh, they were there except for Patrick Stewart in 2017. They were all there except for Patrick Stewart in um, the 30th anniversary of Next Generation. Uh, William Shatner was the host, which was funny. Um, but yes, uh, Maria Sirtis and Casey McFadden were there, and they looked platinum blonde, wh well, white hair. Now their hair was gray. <laughs> gray. <laughs> I mean, they're, yeah, they're in their early, late, early 60s, late 60s, early 70s. So, yeah, it would, it was a, yeah, so it's, it's a wig. So that, that funny the rogue hair with the, the, the thing in it is a wig. It's not her hair. So. <clears throat> anyway, um, which is fine. I mean, Brent Spiner wore makeup for most of it. Actors do that. You see, mmm. Yes. You know, Cal Cat and Mark's Cards cameos in this finale. Um, <laughs> uh, kind of, sort of, look, looking like us a little bit. Uh, yeah. So this was a Borg. <laughs> Borgified person, and uh, yeah, sort of standing there in the background. And uh, in, in the bar, <laughs> the poker shake with him. Yeah, so so we have, uh, but there's, um, yeah, we didn't actually have a game, but it looked like us. Uh, anyway, so, uh, also in the transport, yeah, we were everywhere. <laughs> we were everywhere. Um, no, no, we were No, we weren't. Okay. So, um, be cool, hi cat. So, uh, yeah. Uh, they get rescued from the theme of the last minute. The queen says something, we're blowing up. It would have been funny if she said something like, I am Iron Man or something, but no, no, she just, ah! I think it would have been appropriate if they threw in a swear word there. And they go, oh! <laughs> you know, drop an F bomb right there. Yeah, it would be funny. And, um, yeah. And then we have, um, they return the Enterprise D to the fleet yards, to the, the fleet, the Trek yards, yes, the, uh, Fleet Museum. Um, uh, yeah, Trek yards, guys, you're in this too. I, yeah, I saw your cameos as well. Yep. Um, we should meet. We should hang out. It'd be awesome. Um, <laughs> maybe if we come to San Jose, we'll, we'll hang out. That was cool. Um, <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> anyway, so we have, uh, well, they do, they do. Um, so, Mr. Sp mm, also, Mr. Story is retired, so he could have been in there, too. But I don't think he was. Um, so here we have, uh, uh they save the fleet, so basically, as uh, spoilers, they the rescue the fleet, they, none of them die, um, <laughs> Uh, they come to, um, you know, the ship at the end of the museum thing, uh, they pro forgot to put the writing on it, on the hull, it's, it's an image, of, yeah, you can't see it, they took it off. Um, so, yeah, and Tuvok rescues, uh, Tuvok is rescued, and he shows up at the end, Tim Russ, and, uh, Seven of Nine is trying to, they do the whole, I'm gonna be, they've done this in Next Generation a few times, uh, that one, um. Yeah, I totally want to resign because of the stuff I did, but I saved the fleet, so oh, I, 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 I deny your resignation. You saved the universe, so we're going to promote you to captain. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's how, that, that's how the Navy works. Yeah. Um, oh, well. <laughs> anyway, so, 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 yeah. Also, we have, uh, it opens with a, a, I think it's actually Walter Koenig doing playing his son. Walter Koenig is playing Anton Chekhov, and he says he's the president of Starfleet in the background. So that's cool, they got a voiceover from Walter Koenig as, as Anton Chekhov. Mm. Thus, in playing, well, the other one in the, the other timeline, 
died, but uh, this one's alive. Yeah. Um, and then they, they, a year later, they rechristened the Titan the Enterprise G, which is out of Silly Shrek. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, even though it was quite a bit smaller than the other one. And yeah, so there's this Enterprise G that suddenly goes, and it's smaller than the other one. I wonder, seven of nine is that they have an Enterprise G. <laughs> I don't know how it necessarily feel. I mean, that's, that's all right, I guess. But you figure they just keep going bigger and bigger and bigger. Maybe they don't. Maybe they have to go smaller for a while. Oh, well, half the fleet is devastated by the Borg thing anyway, so they, they probably don't have any ships left. Um, uh, yeah, and is there a historical precedent for 2401? A bunch of ships were destroyed. Uh, yeah. uh, there was no cameo by um, Janeway. There was no cameo by Kira. There was no cameo by the Paw Wraiths either. Um, but there is, at the very end credits, after the credits, they do. They go to the bar, do a poker game, do the, do all the sentimental feelies. They wrap up Raffi's grandson story arc and say like, oh, now he likes her because she sa helped save the universe. Uh, Worf leaked her image, I guess, and ended her spy career, so to speak. But, uh, but still, that was like, I guess that was enough that her, she helped save the universe. So they're all like, oh, okay, we like you now, you're not weird. Um, well, she still could be, but, but <laughs> you know, they... Uh, <laughs> and then she goes to be the first officer, said Captain to Seven of Nine, on the, um, on the Titan slash Enterprise G, and they bring... Um, uh, they've rescued the son, uh, Jack, and they make him an ensign, a fast track only here, uh, which is ridiculous. But they, instead of giving him like a like a duty station, they just assign him as counselor on the ship, which is funny. Um, you're the counselor. Okay, <laughs> that's all he could get you in a year. You're the counselor. Um, <laughs> mm, mental health means nothing in space. And Troy is talking to Data, doing a counseling session. Yeah, okay. Funny. Um. And hearkening back to that, we have all the all the touchy feelies. It was very very. Emotionally uplifting in the end of the last 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Clearly, Terry Metellus knows what he's doing, and if he's getting, clearly they're going to do something more. I don't know why they introduced the Enterprise F and then G early and then kind of wrecked one of them, but they did. Um, yeah, I guess they figured, well, it's been 20 years, why would there have already been an Enterprise F and then gone from there? But you know what happened to the E? Mm, yeah. The other ones, uh, of course, in Starship locations, we kind of know what happened to the E. The Enterprise E was under LaForge and Worf in the Chimera stories, and um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was under LaForge and Worf from Starship Chimera in 2388 to uh, 2396 or so, and then it was lost in a battle with the Cillian Renegades, the same battle that took the Chimera from that era. 2396. There was a battle. Silly renegades. Um, yeah, from the uh, from the, the rift. That's why there is no sign of the two of the, the of those characters from the other um, the evergreen stories. There's no sign of the other Agini guy because he was there. He's not there. <laughs> He's not there. Yeah. Yeah, and the other dude, but Khaki's still around, and the and the first Agini is still around, so he might show up. So anyway, uh, in another story, uh, yeah, they they couldn't tread over on Starship locations season three, which was yeah uh, being written during well this was already being filmed, so I was all like, okay season three I have to make it look a little different so they can't encounter the same Zillions that caused the twenty three ninety six thing. It'll throw off Picard season three. Better not do that. But Picard season three then premiered, so uh, so the whole thing of the last ten weeks uh, has uh, not treaded on season three of ours at all. Uh, they they do reference Chimera quite a bit, uh, so they clearly think it's canon, which is fun. It's beta canon. It's not really canon. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, they even have a cameo by Q. There was a cameo by Q in the twenty four oh two story uh, Starship locations. Me, um, Strange Worlds pilot with the tribbles and the 
bluegills and all that. And he had a cameo in the background, similar to this one. It said, so now his test is for Jack Crusher. <laughs> yeah, that was something we suggested. Yes! <laughs> Should we go after somebody else now? Mmm. Yeah, Q is not dead. Come on. Um, they, they, they retconned a bunch of stuff in the previous stories. And, um, and uh, they left Kestra out of it because Starship Location Strange Worlds had Kestra in it. And Tam Lacarno, the child of Ezri Lacarno, Ezri Dax married Nick Lacarno. And after he was redeemed, he was redeemed in 2376 during the Dominion War. He was rescued from the Dalala prison camp. Well, I think I've been over that. And uh, that character, and another uh, Robbie Duncan McGill character. And, um, and he was rescued, and so was uh, Cedo Jaxa, who they assumed was dead in the next generation. And uh, they were both rescued and uh, signed on the Starship Chimera, and then the Chimera A in 2401 and 02, uh, which is during season three here. Um, yeah, so it all works. The Chimera A, it, it, it lines up with, with what happened to the fleet in this episode, in the finale. It lines up perfectly. It's like, okay, that explains why the Chimera and the Emmett Till go to the Tribble Planet in the first place. And Admiral Picard's over there and sends them on a mission because there's basically... They jacked up all the adults except for the Next Generation people, really. They're kind of messed up and they're recovering from the Borg thing. So they sent they sent these two uh, sort of lower decker ships out there because they figured, yeah, yeah, we got nothing left. Let's send them. Okay. Okay. It works. Um, <laughs> so the Emmett Till is around and the Captain Nog, but not in uh, Picard. Uh, it's out Captain Ezri Lacarno. Uh, Ezri Dax married Lacarno. Ezri Dax did not marry Bashir. That makes no sense. Mm. But I do address the Kira and Bashir baby thing in Starship Locations, as you know from my fan films. Uh, we address that. Uh, because we have we have Kiriyoshi O'Brien on our ship and Molly O'Brien on the ship, and uh, yes, so uh, and he looks like Bashir. So there's what really happened. So it was it was really that Kira was the whole thing was 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 made up to make to hide the fact that Kira and Bashir were an item, not Kira and Odo. It was Kira and Bashir, and that baby was Bashir's, not O'Brien's, because it. Because actually, in real life, it was not Dana Visitor and, and, and uh, City Fidel. They they had a baby. That was there, so they had to hide it and make up this O'Brien thing and throw off that because it completely threw off the, the Odo and Kira thing that was dumb anyway. So they address it in Silly Trek. They come out and say it. it would, and Kiriyoshi is a bit a bit um, bitter, embittered over the fact that his parents won't admit who he, who he actually is. He's not an O'Brien. He's very obviously a Bashir, <laughs> which is funny. Um, but yes, he's not in Picard. He's in Starship locations. Uh, this is addressed more, moreover in Strange Worlds, um, uh, the Fallen Ones. Starship locations, Strange Worlds, the Fallen Ones addresses the uh, the 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 parental the parental bastardization directly in the in the wedding of Miral Paris to uh, to. Uh, yeah, um, the Molly O'Brien, they, they get married in the, in the career of the Fallen Ones. Um, yes, because we're LGBTQ friendly and thought it would be cool to do that. Have two characters. In them. And they're not in Picard at all, but, yeah. So that would, so the reason Kestrel was not in Picard Season 3 is because she's evidently at the Academy, studying to be an officer, and um, Season 3, that that's in the can but not filmed yet, it's uh, written season three of, of our series, uh, Starship Locations series, uh, Strange Worlds, has a, uh, has Kestra in it, is uh, they're trying to get to the Academy to, uh, to go to Starfleet, and uh, that lines up with just the end of this, where they jumped ahead a year, it lines up with it. Uh, it's 2403 in that, because, well, all that other stuff happened two years earlier, so they couldn't go to the Academy yet, so it works. Ah, hmm, why don't they just hire us? They need to just hire us. It's very convoluted, but we'll do it. Hmm, but, <laughs> so yeah. Um, yes. 
<laughs> props. Props. Ah. So. So yeah. Mmm. Yeah. Um. Star Trek. Picard. Season three. Yeah. Uh, much better than one and two. Usually they do better with the third season. The Discovery was the same way. And years ago, Next Generation was the same way. The third season was better than one and two. They did, they, yeah, they just have to give it time to ferment, mm, as Dr. McCoy would say. Mm. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Amanda Plummer and, and, and uh, Ed Spleers need to get an Emmy nomination for this. Uh, because Amanda Plummer acted her ass off in this. And, and there's... And Ed Spears did a good job too. <laughs> they both need to get an Emmy nominated for this for this film and and a Saturn Award because yeah, I mean, of course Patrick Stewart just sounds like he's eighty three years old and and uh, wistful and uh, he's kind of Picard but kind of the robot Picard. Uh, but yeah, the other the, the cameo. It appears that M um, Gates McFadden, Michael Dorn. And and basically everybody other than yeah and and Brent Spiner, Marina Sirtis, they were all just guest stars because they didn't have as many clients. Um, yeah, so it's not like the ensemble. It's more like half the ensemble, but some of the others. And where's Wesley? Little bastard, get in there, Wesley. Mm. Nick Licardo redeemed. Uh, and of course over there at a. Uh, Lower Decks, they thought the same thing we did too, and they've included Cedo Jax uh, on a planet in, I think, season two of Lower Decks. She just shows up on the commander from the other ship and a, like, on the planet, like a science officer observing something. Clearly, they rescued her too. So. Chimera was there. Mm. And of course, Lower Decks, season three, you had, you had um, the San Jose show, the California class San Jose, which, uh, yeah. So. <laughs> but yes, um, should have been called the Milpitas, but that would have been too obscure. So I said, well, it's San Jose. Yeah. It's bigger than San Francisco, technically, in population. It's over a million. The San Jose. Yeah. Captain Calcat of the San Jose. Coming to assist the, the attack by the, the Texas class ships from 2380-something. I thought maybe they might have said Shelby was... Us at Changeling, who was following the board, that kind of didn't go together really. They made a pact with the Changelings because they were both diseased by the, the Section Thirty One people. It didn't make sense. And also, Section Thirty, yeah, there's some weird stuff. In it. But Section Thirty One is going to be a, a TV movie, and eh, well, a series would have been lame. So he said, TV movie, all right, that's fine. Don't make a show out of. It. There's nothing there. It's like the, the Section Thirty One is is then deemed to be yeah uh cheesy don't do that um anyway so follow starship locations it it does at Picard show um it avoids the launch of the triple escape to the triple planet at the end <laughs> presumably that happened in the year that they said one year later and the whole two, those two seasons happened in there Ooh. enterprise g because they didn't want to call it the Enterprise F because it sounds like failure. And it kind of was. Mmm. <laughs> it's just kind of messed up because I think it was the, uh, the guy that designed that for uh, Star Trek Online, he basically said his ship sucks, pretty much. It's kind of messed up. Um, <laughs> and somebody, somebody's mad about that. Uh, yeah, that ship design. And the other design was the, uh, the Ryan Church job. Uh, Bill Prost, Bill Prost, no, the other guy. Um, the Shangri-La class Titan. Yeah, Titan A. Which also resembles the Titan A one from Starship Chimera fan film. It looks enough like it. They say, oh, yeah, they're, they're similar design lineage. A little more buffed. Um, it's hard to do wood and make it look like that. But yeah, it, 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 it was the same. Yeah, that, that's not directly a coincidence, though, because... The Shangri-La class and the and the Excelsior were the inspiration for that design. So, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that was. What about the uh, 
but the Titan A in our story was a uh, our uh, Calcat design. So. Mm. And also my unique runabout was uh, the Star Trek version of the, the Jackass, the Jacques, the Jacques, uh, named after Brian Story's former street address uh, residence. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and it was his shuttle, and I painted it. I put it together and painted it. Um, yeah, gave it blue, uh, purple uh, cell caps. Weird. Yeah. Um, we did a lot of wood Star Trek things. The uh, yeah, we did uh, the Chimera A, the Emmett Till, built from scratch. They actually saucer set. Yeah, which we'll see in season three, briefly. Uh, but they're very heavy. Also, we built an even heavier one. We built a, a, a Calcat show built a uh, the SDF three A for the Robotech thing, and uh, it just got bigger and bigger and bigger until finally now it's like twenty pounds and it's enormous and it's really super detailed. So for a wood ship, it's very cool. Um, <laughs> but yes, um, that make your hero ship really cool. Mm, so. It'll probably show up in season three of Chimera as well as something else. Oh, there it is over there. You can use this as a model. It looks cool. Let's use it. <laughs> I don't know if they did the next generation. They would often redress a model and just use it. Oh, it's the Blaxian ship. No, wait. It's a Teronian ship. Oh, wait. It's the Terellian ship. They use Terellian a lot, too. After Mark's Cars characters, the Terellians, which were supposed to be lizards, but, yeah. They were never lizards on TNG. <laughs> there were four armed lizards, and then and then they um, made a Torellian piano player with four arms. So they clearly were, yeah, they were like coming up with the same stuff. Oh my goodness, all the time. It was like we were on totally on the same wavelength. There had to. I don't think Metallus or, or McMahon attended school with us, but it's like they did. It's like they were in the same room, and they were like, yeah. Years ago, I met you know these guys at school, and it was a role playing game, and I just I went back home and I got on Star Trek. Yeah, did my own thing. Weird. Um, yeah, the Trek cards people have also encountered stuff like that, though, on the same wavelength kind of stuff. Like, oh yeah, yeah, we totally did that too. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know if they're actually paying attention to the fan films. They seem to be, though. I mean, yeah, they really do seem to be. Um, <laughs> mm. I know David Gerald's paying attention. <laughs> oh, hi, guys. <laughs> the only thing he warned about at the last convention, the Adam Savage convention, was don't do blood and fire. It's already been done. Well, that's okay, we're not going to do that one. Um, <laughs> we're not doing that one. No. How, would we how would we film that with action figures? It's kind of impossible. You have to look at our action figures film preview, and he's like, yeah, you really couldn't, you know, film. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, you really couldn't pull that off. Bloodworms attacking somebody would be impossible. Although, uh, Strange New Worlds mm, kind of did that with the Gorn last season. Those should have been Regulon Bloodworms, not Gorn. They have the wrong species. Yeah, they screwed that up. Those should have been Regulon Bloodworms attacking them. Because then that would have made sense. It would have been like, oh, the David Gerald character. Okay. <laughs> they changed it to the Gorn, but it's clearly not the Gorn. It's sort of like Alien and Regulon Bloodworms. Mm. But yes, there is a trailer for season, season um, two of Strange New World starts in June. Um, I don't, um, don't know about Fanime yet. Too soon to tell. Yeah, so, um, but yeah, the, uh, but the next Adam Savage convention, I think, is in, like, October or something. Way off there. Um, so it's not, it's going to be later. So, yeah, um, that's Picard Season 3. Yeah, uh, rambled on because it's the finale. Overall season thoughts uh, worked out um, on multiple levels, and yeah, oh, yeah. I think it worked out. I don't know what they were doing, the Q cameo at the end, and all that. Um, I like that they didn't just immediately promote him to 
tactical officer or something. And they just said, oh, no, you're the ship's counselor. <laughs> then why would they do that, though? You think, like, that, that also doesn't make sense in a Navy context because he was assimilated by the Borg along with some of the other ones, and yet he's kind of mentally, like, weird. I mean, just because they cut off the collective doesn't mean that he isn't brain damaged from being in, all you know, messed up in space. And he would be honorably discharged, I would think. Um, but, yeah, Space Navy. Okay. Anyway, 